We are living in unprecedented times. We have seen the world enter into chaos and fear in a way that most of us wouldn't expect. If there's one thing all of this shows is that our plans for the future are in no way guaranteed. Many people's lives have been affected by the virus. We have seen fear be the common theme of every nation over the past two years. Many people are struggling to pay bills. Many people are struggling to find a job. Many people are struggling with addictions and other people are struggling with isolation and loneliness. This Christmas season, the most important thing that you could think about isn't the traditions of Christmas. Even if you believe Christmas to be pagan and don't celebrate it, for this season, right now, the most important thing that you can think about is something this world system does not want you to consider. Why is the world in such a crazy place? Do you realize that it's been like this for ages? Genocides, wars, famines, all throughout history, people bound by fear, people bound by hatred, people bound by selfishness, people bound by ignorance, people bound by depression and sadness, people bound by unbelief. There is something destroying this world, destroying nations, destroying cultures, destroying cities, destroying families, and destroying individuals. This thing is what the Bible calls sin. Sin is like a disease that no matter how hard humanity tries to solve it, it keeps coming back. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Sin is like a virus that looks to convert all life around it and bring it into a place of chaos and destruction. It's a three-letter word, but it is something that has done more harm than you and I could ever imagine. To the extent that the world has been affected the past few years due to a virus, we can't even understand how far short this world has fallen from the perfection of God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There will be a day when God eradicates all sin from the face of the earth. And if you have sin in your life when God does that, you will be eternally judged and eternally condemned. 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says that on that day, God will bring, quote, to light the things that are now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, for we must all appear. That means all of us. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. If someone had cancer and was dying, the greatest gift that could be given is a solution, a cure, and an answer to their cancer. No other gift compares to the gift of life when you're headed towards death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The real meaning of Christmas is actually that God gave us the greatest gift, an escape from the coming judgment of sin. You may be saying, gosh, how does this have anything to do with Christmas? There was a time in history where God provided the cure for sin. He entered the world. He came personally to deliver it to us. In the person of Jesus Christ, God does something no other human could do. He willingly sacrifices himself for sin. That means pays the debt for your sins. Many people listening to this would not likely die for a random person. How about an enemy? Would you demonstrate your love for someone that hated you or someone that didn't acknowledge your existence because they didn't like what you stood for? Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I'm going to read it in full context, starting in verse 6. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, 
Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Reconciliation is when something that has been broken or separated has been put back together. Sin has separated you from God. The only way to bridge that gap is through the cross of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 says, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus took the judgment you deserve on the cross, and he conquered your sin, and he rose from the dead three days later. He truly is the vaccine that overcomes human sinfulness and all the bad effects sin has in our lives and in the world around us. Jesus Christ is the cure. Christmas isn't about traditions, family, trees, or lights. It's actually all about God entering into the world to provide a way for you to escape the coming judgment. There is a day of judgment for each person, a day of destiny, an appointment no one can escape. The wrath and judgment for sin will be poured out somewhere. It will be poured out on you, or if you receive him and believe in him, it was poured out upon Jesus Christ, and you can experience a removal of God's wrath and condemnation from your life. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says, In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. This Christmas season, it is very important to consider all of this. You may say you don't believe, but that is the very evidence of sin at work in your being, subverting your mind so that your heart can pursue a life without God. Jesus Christ was God incarnate, and he came to pull off a rescue that is more intense than the greatest rescue ever shown in any action or adventure movie. All of human history has been changed by Jesus Christ. What year do we live in today? And what happened 2,021 years ago? Those that are tired of living in bondage to anger, fear, selfishness, self-pity, pride, arrogance, lust, addiction, loneliness, and the full spectrum of wrong and sinful actions that those things bring will cry out to Jesus Christ and ask him to save them, to save them from their sin, to save them from their guilt, to save them from judgment. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It continues in verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. If you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ and have not made him the Lord of your life, you are guilty. If you have not repented of your sins and turned to Jesus Christ, you are headed down the wrong road. Sin has a way of blinding people from seeing its effects in their lives. And on top of that, the devil, the enemy of your soul, has blinded you in darkness. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Satan is not God Almighty, but those living in sin apart from God are under Satan's dominion and trapped in his system. While you're living in rebellion to God, there's no escape from the devil's control. He has a way of making you think you're free while you're in the worst kind of chains. Everyone is quick to see the wrong in other people, but very often people have a hard time seeing the wrong within themselves. You have sinned against God in your life, and there is only one remedy for that guilt, and it's this, that Jesus Christ died in your place, taking your judgment 
so that you can be forgiven. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him, speaking about Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If there was someone that owed $50 billion and they had only $100 in their bank account, the greatest gift given would be if the person they were in debt to forgave their debt. And that is exactly what God has done. However, it goes even further. Jesus didn't just forgive your debt. He paid your debt with his blood. And he paid your debt by bearing your guilt and condemnation. And he doesn't just pay your debt, he goes even further. He offers you a new life. First Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Romans 6.4 says, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If there was ever a way to describe what Christmas should be all about, it's this, God's gift to you. Christmas really is all about gifts. God's gift of forgiveness, his gift of life, his gift of a clean slate and fresh start his gift of reconciliation to him, his gift of freedom. And whether you celebrate Christmas religiously, secularly, or don't celebrate it at all, what matters right now is that you receive God's gift, that you receive his forgiveness, you receive the life he is offering. This isn't an issue of whether Christmas in the 21st century is paganly celebrated. This is an issue of have you received God's gift of escape from his coming judgment on the world? Have you encountered the Jesus Christ of the Bible in your heart? Have your sins been washed away? Does God's very own spirit dwell in you? I'm not talking about going to church and being baptized, confessing to a priest, taking communion or having ever read the Bible long ago. You can do all of that and have it mean absolutely nothing. The question this Christmas is this, are you prepared for the coming judgment? Have you received God's gift of life and been cleansed from sin through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ? This world has been utterly shaken by a virus these past two years, but the world has been utterly and completely devastated by sin. There is coming a day very soon where God will judge both the living and the dead. Second Timothy 4.1 says, that Jesus will one day judge the living and the dead. This Christmas season, this is what God wants you thinking about. There are so many outlets that try to quell our problems or cover over our problems, but they just mask the problems. Some of the common ones are drinking, drugs, pornography, fornication, adultery, gluttony, self-driven success, coveting, lying to yourself or others, pride, depression, and pity false forms of spirituality. All of these cannot solve the disease of sin in your life. It's like trying to put a bandage on someone who is deathly ill with heart failure and expecting it to solve the problem. There is coming a day unlike any other day, and now is the time, this Christmas season, to make sure you are prepared for God's coming judgment. The Bible says today is the day of salvation and that it is appointed unto men and women once to die and then the judgment. Today, receive God's Christmas gift to you. Receive Jesus Christ, receive his forgiveness, receive his freedom, receive his love. Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15 says, Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death the lake of fire. 
And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Death is certain. Christ is the cure. In light of this dose of truth you just received this Christmas season, what are you going to do? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.